Yeah, g'day YouTube and everyone out there. So I was just going through my conspiracy folder because <laughs> that's what it was all this time, mate, but it never was. It was just information and shit. So I've got a document here. The article appears in the May the 3rd, 2002 issue of the Executive Intelligence Review all right, by Alan Douglas. Now, this is that old. It's from 2002. This is um, uh, the Australian's emergency laws mimic Hitler's. It's five pages, so I'll read it out to you, right? So, by Alan Douglas. In late March, Australia's government suddenly rammed through the lower house of parliament draconian emergency anti-terror laws, anti-immigrant and anti-political freedom legislation, which goes as far beyond anything discussed in the post-September 11th United States. The law is now up for vote in Australia Senate as early as May the 14th are the precise equivalent to Adolf Hitler's emergency degree of February 28, 1933. Following the infamous Reichstag fire, the formerly called, well, we all know that he blew up his own building for that so he could invade as well, so... Following the infamous ranch day fire, the formally called the decree of the protection of the people of the state. We've got to protect you because we love you. We've got to help you. That's the same thing that they're playing here. The Nazis abolished free speech, the freedom of the press, sanctity at home, security of mail and telephonic communications, and the freedom to assemble or form organizations most importantly. It allowed Adolf Hitler to arbitrarily designate enemies of the state and eliminate them within a month. Within a, within a month, he was building the first concentration camp at Dachau. But while Hitler had to wait until his, uh, well, the, the not in Vergen, not not Vergen, or some German word for Nazis, basically, were when his were, were enacted to build the concentration camps, several seven such camps ringed with razor wire are already functioning here in Australia. They hold three thousand five hundred inmates, charged with no crime, who are subject to daily psychological and physical torture. At least two or more such camps are presently being built. These new ones with electrified fences. The strategic context. Australian, Australia is the Bush administration's loyal ally in the war of terror. Even more than that, Tony Blair's Britain itself. But although the Australian government emergency decrees is part of the reflect of the US At 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 Attorney General John Afcroft's group roundups of and security actions against Arab American and Muslim groups and individuals, they go far beyond these prisons. Presidential pre election candidate Lyndon LaRouche forecast already during Ashcroft's confirmation battle months before September 11 the emergency measures exactly like Hitler's not for Gurm Gurm, <laughs> yeah, the same thing. It's uh, N O T V E R N. Uh, v R O R D N U N G. I can't really read it at the moment. So, and not only in the United States, because of the global financial breakdown underway, given the necessary to manage the population under conditions of the global financial crash already then unfolding, LaRouche warned, you're going to get crisis management where members of the special warfare types of the secret government, the secret police teams, will set off prov pro <laughs> provocations, which will be used to bring about dictatorial powers and emotion in the name of crisis management. September the, since September the 11th, Ashcroft has acted precisely as LaRouche forecast by rounding up thousands of people and holding them in incommunicado by Gestapo style raids against moderate Islamic groups in Virginia and other states by his attempt to establish a multi-million spy as person spy apparatus the USA the USA Freedom Corps 
by the establishment of secret military tribunals for terrorism by the rapid moves to eliminate the attorney privilege, etc. You got to remember, people, that like um, uh, this is basically when you're classified as a terrorist, right? And uh, what's happened now is with this this new virus, this COVID that's going around, like uh, many people are saying, they are going to test you positive because that's already part of what you are. And what they're doing is is basically picking a, a part of what you normally have inside of your body and saying it's foreign to you. So everyone out there is going to have a positive test to this. And uh, with this, because believe it or not, what I believe that's going on behind the closed doors is that governments are telling each other that it was a bioweapon that originally come out from Wuhan. And because of this reason, they aren't saying anything to us. And of course it's not because it's, that's not the true fact of it. But what they're doing is they're bypassing laws that allow us to become the terrorists without us ever having to do anything to become a terrorist. So basically now, if you are positive for the the, the, the CV, or we will just say COVID-19 because CV is a list of many, but if you are positive for that, then therefore now you are considered a bioweapon. So therefore you are now considered a bioterrorist. And even though you haven't done anything and you haven't stepped out of line, you you haven't gone out of your way to create social disruption or become a dissident or anything like that. Just the fact that you are alive during the, the, the clandestine movement of what's going on right now towards the agenda, then therefore you have already become that bioterrorist and all of these laws that are being read right now actually do actually come into a time right now that, that is a state of emergency. What we've gone into now far succeeds what I'm reading right now, but like I said, this is 2002. So the rapid moves to eliminate the attorney, the attorney client privilege, etc. September 11th has also stated the justification for Australia's proposed new laws. The leadership of both of Australia's major parties, Prime Minister John Howard's ruling Liberal Party, National Party Coalition and the opposition Australian's Labor Party, the ALP, are strongly inclined for its own reasons. In other words, they all agree in that, but they're, they're all in that for their own reasons. Bit, bit of a wank wank, but yeah. And we got uh, the, 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 for their own reasons. To follow the United States wherever it leads them. Australia is in charge of the Persian Gulf naval blockage of Iraq, has deployed its special air services in combat in Afghanistan, and has had extreme joint military exercises with the United States in the northern Australia and Howard has indicated his openness in participating in a war against Iraq. On March the 21st, Howard's government suddenly handed an astonished House of Representatives the eight bills compromising to the most sweeping changes to Australian security and intelligence measures seen since World War II. Sound familiar? The Germans just the other day started to put their police out, and they said that the police themselves in Berlin have never done and had the power of the laws that they've got right now since this pandemic, since World War II. So you can imagine what that means, secret police. Um, uh, which is quite a scary fucking thing that we're entering into here, people, because, you know, this is the, the thing that we're told never to repeat in history. And yeah. the bills had been prepared in utter secrecy. So, such that even the backbench non-cabinet MPs and Howard's own party had initially revolted when they first told them. The opposition Labour Party of the similar parties were given precisely 16 hours overnight to examine 100 pages of legislation and 100 pages of mandatory memoranda. Overnight to read 200 pages and memorise it. 16 hours. They pushed that without even probably reading bulk. <laughs> Overnight to examine 100 of the explanatory memoranda. Before debate began on them, the following day, the bills were passed and are now before the Senate, which reconvenes on the May the 14th. Be speaking, the government's fanatical commitment, the Senate's legal and constitutional committee allowed two weeks for the public hearings. The bills are the Australian Security Intelligence Organisation Legislation Amendment on Terrorism, 
Bill 202, the Border Security Legislation Amendment Bill of 202, the Criminal Code Amendment, Espionage and Related Offences, the Bill 2002, the Security Legislation Amendment to Terrorism, Bill 2002, the Suppression of the Financing of Terrorism, Bill 2002, the Telecommunications Interception Legislation Amendment Bill. In other words, since 2002, everyone in Australia has been spied on. And uh, the Criminal Code Amendment Suppression of Terrorist Bombings. Bill 2002, the Criminal Code Amendment, Anti-Hoax and Other Measures. So we could be looking at um, disinformation as what they consider as disinformation right there. Um, uh, yeah, let me just make sure my phone is still recording because it's been going a while. I've got no power here, people, so I'm just using my um, phone recording while I'm reading. Yeah, so the power went out from 7 this morning to 4 this afternoon. You know, I think this is to get the used to the idea of the power going off and it won't be anything sinister. But like I said, they'll come for you in the night, in the middle of the night, mate, when the fucking the, the power goes off. Um. In 100 pages is the bill. Okay, that was all the bills. Australians not for nor done nagan. Not for nor done. I'm guessing that it just means fucking secret police or whatever in Germany. The last three have already passed both houses and is now law. That was 2002. It provides for two years in jail a person for it to use uh, use a postal or like service in such a way that would be regarded by the reasonable person as being in all circumstances menacing, harassing or offensive. The offence would cover material that would make a person's apprehensive uh, yeah, apprehensive as to his or her safety or well being or the safety of his or her property, as well as containing offence or abusive language or derogatory religious, racial or sexual connotations. Under the legislation, anyone sending out a newspaper or magazine, which, for instance, warned of the global financial crash, could be judged to be making people un un apprehensive. The remaining still... Pending legislation refines as a new offence of terrorism. So basically, that is me doing what I'm doing right now and anyone else out there that's been a truther all of these years because we're giving information outside of what the mainstream says and uh, what outside of what you're only really supposed to know, then we'll be considered as making you more apprehensive and more push towards an ideology when they don't want people becoming apprehensive about anything. So that's quite spun out. See, I haven't read this for a very long time and I've only pulled it back out now because I have a massive folder that back in the day I studied a lot of this stuff. So, um, uh, duh, 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 duh. <clears throat> Apprehensive, the remaining still pending, still pending legislation defines the new offence of terrorism which is also broad that a wide range of political activity, including certain instances of picketing, public demonstrations, and civil disobedience could be labelled as terrorists. For an instance, a representative of the Attorney General, Darren Williams' office replied in the affirmative, in the affirmative when he was asked in Parliament if actions taken, such as cutting a lock with bolt cutters, during a recent protest against the internment of refugees at the brutal Warumba detention centre in South Australia would be counted as terrorism under the new laws. The Attorney General would be empowered to prescribe organisations using four criteria of terrorism, including the vaguely worded, worded catch-all likely to endanger the security or integrity of an Australian Commonwealth or another country, existing laws. To the safety and the integrity of Australia, with no mention of other countries, Williams bragged that this substitution of a single word, security, radically widens the scope of existing laws. Under the legislation, organisations could be proscribed, 
whether or not they have been charged or convicted of anything, individuals who assisted them or members of them could be imprisoned for up to 25 years. The law would place on an onus on the group to prove that they are not terrorists. So to prove that you're not a terrorist, they're going to lock you away for 25 years if you had any association to listen to anything or doing anything that they deemed, a, well, dissident. You agree with that, don't you? What I'm saying? Yes, it's for sure. Yeah. The legislation may also be applied retrospectively, i.e. on any previous conduct now deemed terrorist. That is, if the person who cut the lock at the Warumba were a member of an organisation, that organisation could be banned and anyone associated with it thrown in jail for 25 years to life. Additionally, terrorist acts are very broadly defined and include serious harm to persons, serious damage to property and serious interference with the destruction of the economic system done with the intention of advancing a political, religious or ideological cause. So we know what that, <laughs> that's just crazy, that one, isn't it? Because that's their agenda. One prominent lawyer, Greg, came under the University of Tasmania, noted has noted that the organised and the persistent protest pro, uh, protest tactics by community pressure groups to flood the politicians with emails, faxes and uh, phone calls could fall under this legislation. So in other words, if you have something to say, you'll get arrested for it. That groups advocating a wide variety of political cause could be judged as endangering the integrity of the Commonwealth or of another country. So you say something bad about a US government or a government of another country inside of the world, you can be charged. And that may, may that may that and that many other persons beyond those physically engaging in such a direct activities would be also potentially liable for related terrorism offences. The Australian Intelligence, the Australian Security Intelligence Organisation (ASIO), the equivalent of Britain's Domestic Intelligence Agency (MI5), which you might be interested to know if you go into your C drive, which I used to do back in the day. You go into your C drive, and I think it's the Windows program files, or it might be the Windows files themselves. But you search, mate, you'll find that giant file in it that says ASIO. In a, the intelligence agency under MI5 is to be transformed into the secret police with the powers to detain people for up to six days without a lawyer and with the right to remain silent well, and without the right to remain silent. Should they execute, exercise their right to remain silent or fail to produce something such as a document which the government may rightly or wrongly claim that they have, they may be jailed for up to five years. The detainee need not to be a terrorist suspect, just someone whom the police think might have information about terrorism. Lawyers and journalists would be major public targets. The attorney's client's privilege, well, the, the, the journalists, real journalists, mate, we're not talking about mainstream because they're just a propaganda machine. The attorney-client privilege would be eliminated forever. The notion of espionage is no longer limited to the classification, classified information, but extends to almost any government organization's information, organized information, putting journalists, whistleblowers, and political activists on the crosshairs. Unpre unpreceded or unprecedented secret trials are private provided for merely if a court is satisfied that it is in the interest of the security or the defense of the Commonwealth. So there goes your massive freedom of speech. And you got to remember, we're in this time right now, the emergency laws. So this is the parts that they're not telling us, you know, the self-isolation and that, that's not even here. But this is emergency laws. Already, the proclamation of then Defence Minister Peter Reith in October, Australia's super-secret defence Signals Directorate, the DSD, has been given a far wider power to spy on Australian citizens for purpose of maintaining Australia's economic, economic well-being, promoting Australia's foreign relations, preventing or investigating the commission of a serious crime or 
responding to an apparent threat to the safety of a person, among other things. Previously, the DSD could only spy on Australians within Australia if they were working for foreign power. Now, anyone posting uh, posting a serious challenge to the fanatical commitment of Australia's two major parties to globalisation, for example, would clearly be fair game under the new laws. The concentration camps. Dun, dun, dun. Fuck, eh? I haven't read this for a long time. One of the clearest markers for the developing fascist police state in Australia is the practice of the mandatory detention for asylum seekers, a policy unique to Australia among Western nations. The 3,500 unfortunate now in the detention centres, actually concentration camps, include over 400 children under 18, of who 50 have no family. Most camps are located in remote areas of the Australian continent. Hundreds or thousands of miles from civilization or on Australia's even remote possessions, such as the Cocos Islands and the Christmas Island, or the Cocos and the Christmas Islands, thousands of miles offshore. Little or no news can leak out about what is happening at these camps. They are usually surrounded by several layers of barbed wire, top, um, barbed wire topped with razor wire. This is the 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 what they're fucking doing right now. Well, they're not doing that to the extreme right now, but they've also just made Rottnest, which is another island. Do you get it? According to the studies, many or even most of the camps inmates had already experienced torture or the death of a disappearance of one of their family members before they came to Australia. Many had fled to Afghanistan or Iraq, particularly Shiites from Iraq, whom the United States encouraged to rebel against Saddam Hussein in 1990. They have had unusually paid their entire pathetic life savings to a smuggler, risking their and their children's lives on leaky boats, usually sailing from Indonesia in hopes of starting a new life in Australia. One of these boats sunk recently and 353 men and women on board died. Having caught and uh, interned them, the Australian government initially keeps asylum seekers separate from the other inmates who might tell them of their rights to file for legal help. Until the allotted 30 days has expired, 30 days, not 14, but 30, the camps are run for profit as was the, the German Nazi camps. By Australasian Correctional Management, the ACM, a substitute for of the notorious American firm Wackenhut, guards frequently beat or psychologically abuse the inmates, while medical care is almost non-existent because the doctors are all on the payroll of the ACM. Former Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser has described one of the most notorious the, the one of the most notorious of the camps Warumba in the remote desert of South Australia as a hellhole. Mas Masgud Assams, a journalist who fled the repression in Bangladesh, only to be interned in Australia, described the camps in the February two thousand and two New Citizen newspaper of the Russia's Associates. The Citizens Electoral Council, it's worse than the medium security prison. I mean, in a prison, people have minimum rights as human beings, being punished and uh, serving sentences for crimes that they have committed. But in the detention centres, none of the people have any rights. People are treated like animals. Another inmate, Dr. Ashma Sultan, a Shiite from the southern Iraq, co-authored a study of conditions in the Villawood camp at Zachary Steele, a former ACM psychiatrist, whom, like most psychologists hired by ACM, quit in disgust. The study, published in the Medical Journal of Australia, described the deepening psychological depression which refugees typically experience, as they realised that they had little or no hope of getting an Australian citizenship, and that they may stay in the camps indefinitely. 
An overwhelming sense of impending doom gives away to the psychotic illness, including self-mutilations, thoughts of suicide, two-thirds two -thirds regularly contemplate suicide, and full-blown paranoid delusions, riots, hunger, strikes, attempted breakouts, and suicides attempts are common and met with further repression. Earlier this year, inmates at Rwumba dug mass graves and buried themselves up to their necks in over 100 degree Fahrenheit heat, while others slashed their wrists, jumped head first onto razor wire or swallowed detergent. Some 200 went on hunger strike and spewed their lips, sewed their lips shut so that guards could not force feed them, as did many distraught children as well, into imitating their desperate parents. On Christmas Island in December 2001, some 180 refugees were locked in a sport hall the size of two basketball courts for more than a month, although at least one woman among them had tested positive for typhoid. A health profession who visited the site had told the Australian Financial Review on December 11th that conditions in the hall were devastating. My first impression was fundamental disbelief that these living conditions could exist in Australia and in a supervised way, he said. And the last page. This is when it was emerging. We can see a lot more now, I guess. But hey, this is the warnings that we did have all the way back in 2002. Okay, next page. Police state emerging. Notwithstanding their normal differences, the Liberal, the Liberal National Party Coalition and the Labor Party have collaborated. Ooh, that's a surprise. Over the past two years, both at state and federal levels to ram through fascist legislations which had already established many of the preconditions for dictatorship long before September the 11th provocation. See, Australia moves towards a fascist police state. Blah, 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 blah. That's just a different document. And it says the Defence Legislation Amendment Aid to Civilian Authorities Act, for example, to show how authorities and the army plan to kill Australian civilians. Australians dis despise these two parties for their fanatical support of globalisation over the past two decades. Thus, as in France, Germany and the United States, and other Western nations, Australia's major parties are collapsing. They view these sorts of draconian laws as their only means to maintain power. In the federal election in 2001, the ALP recorded its worst vote since 1933, while the equally hated coalition only won because it cooked up a boat people crisis on the eve of the election and rode a Vox population, uh, a Vox popular through on refugees policy to victory. The parties have colluded to change electoral requirements to try and uh, preclude any other political force from engaging to challenge them. Their collapse is shown in the state of Western Australia, home to 3 million of 20 million citizens. Recent discussion with the political insider there have revealed a, a tightly held secret, the membership figures of the major parties. These show these big parties to the Potemkin villages, the ruling ALP, has some 1,600 members. The Liberal Party, which ruled the state for eight years until February 2001, has only 800. And the rural-based National Party has 1,200, by contrast, the New Mirror Party. The Curtin Labor Alliance, founded by La Rouge Associate, Associated CEC, and the Municipal... Was it? Municipal... Employees, municipal, municipal, municipal employees union in uh, April 2000 recruited 800 members within a mere eight months to contest the election, but were kept off the ballot by dirty tricks from the Western Australian Electoral Commission. 
The CEC itself is recognised by insiders to be the fastest growing political party in the country. It is no surprise then that the, a leading civil rights lawyer pointedly warned the CEC, if I were you, I would be extremely concerned about these new laws. A storm of protest has arisen against these bills from many quarters, from the trade union leaders to Supreme Court justices. Notwithstanding, the laws will most likely pass, at least in slightly diluted form, unless opponents face the reality, uniquely outlined by Lyndon LaRouche. Oh, Lyndon LaRouche. The global financial crash is driving this push for dictatorship in the United States, Australia and elsewhere. And all modern day terrorism is a regular warfare run by governments, factions of governments or private financial powers equivalent to the governments, including the attempted US coup date of September 11th. Otherwise, those opposed to these heinous laws will continue to bleat like sheep all the way to the slaughterhouse with no effective answer to the seem, seemingly all-powerful argument. Yes, these laws are draconian, but we must have them because of September 11, the impotent rejoinder often now heard, that we have never had terrorism in Australia. It will, dis it will disappear overnight. The first... Mm. The first, the, the first uh, provocation, well, prov what is it? Provoc provocation. The first provocation of Australian soil, or with another September 11 magnitude attack elsewhere. And this, when fascist Israel Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, the creator of Hamas, is predicting waves of suicide bombers worldwide. So. Back in 2002, they read these documents that were basically mimicking Hitler's lives of the people that were put into under their laws for emergencies. So I thought I'd read that since I found it. And um, uh, I hope everyone's doing well out there. And it's just something to think about, isn't it? So peace, love, and respect, everyone. I hope you're all well. If anything happens to anyone out there, then just drop your, your, your comment. Let me know what's going on. And um, if there's not, which we hope that nothing will happen to many right throughout this, so um, keep your energies balanced and remember to be awake, be aware, and keep eyes on the surroundings. All right, everybody, peace. Yeah, you g'day, YouTube and everyone out there. So I was just going through my conspiracy folder because <laughs> that's what it was all this time, mate, but it never was. It was just information and shit. So I've got a document here uh, uh, the article appears in the may the 3rd 2002 issue of the executive intelligence review all right by alan douglas now this is that old it's from 2002 this is um uh, the australians emergency laws mimic hitler's it's five pages so i'll read it out to you is right so by alan douglas in late March, Australia's government suddenly rammed through the lower house of parliament draconian emergency anti-terror laws, anti-immigrant and anti-political freedom legislation, which goes as far beyond anything discussed in the post-September 11th United States. The laws now up for vote in Australia Senate.